Probably you may know this, that my math lab was down today. Um, so I had to improvise from something we used to provide that we don't anymore, which was a list of the possible problems that could be on the final exam. Um, and of course, this class, which is which ha which is intermediate algebra and college algebra combined, um, had two of these to study. So the department just doesn't do it anymore. Um, but I was able to fish this out so that we could go over not just any old, old uh, radical problems, but those that have been on final exams in the past, because I don't write, I write half the final exam, but not all of it. So always thinking about it, always trying to give my students the best chance to make an A. All right, so we're we're just going to do these because this is what you were going to do today. Anyway, you were going to simplify radicals. You were going to multiply them. You were going to add them and so on and so forth. So here. One form of of uh, simplifying. Trying to get enough room to work here. There, that fun is sarcasm, by the way. All right, so the cube root. Suppose you want the cube root of y to the third. Well, by now, you probably have guessed that what you do is you switch to rational exponents. So the cube root of y to the third is that and that and that. So you would answer y in the answer box. OK, I want to jump to this one first. It looks uglier, but it's actually easier, much easier than that one. So let's see, we've got the square root here of x to the 12th, y to the 14th, and c to the 10th. Well, if you can remember that the index of all square roots is 2, then this is going to be a piece of cake for you. This will be x to the 12 over 2, y to the 14 over 2, and z to the 10 over 2. And we can, we can work with these, right? 12 over 2 is 6, so this will be x to the 6th, y to the 14 over 2 is y to the 7th, and z to the 10 over 2 is z to the 5th. And there's your answer right there. Not hard at all. One of the reasons we, we have ra rational exponents is that it makes working with radicals easier a lot of the time. Now, I want to save that. These are kind of, they don't look difficult, but they are. They are difficult. These, this is difficult, and this is difficult. As you will see, okay? So let's do this and this and this and this because those are just basic arithmetic problems. Arithmetic with radicals, but arithmetic. And notice they're all square roots, which can make it even easier. Darn. Okay. So we've got 
if I do this one, number 55 here, we'll have the square root of two plus the square root of seven times the square root of three minus the square root of seven. Guess what we're gonna do? We're going to multiply in the way we always multiply. Take the square root of two and multiply by the square root of three. And by negative the square root of seven, I forgot to turn this off. There. Okay, sorry. And then we're going to take a uh, positive or plus the square root of seven and multiply it by the square root of three and negative or minus the square root of seven. So that this is what we get. We get the square root of two times the square root of three times the square root of two um, times negative, this is positive times negative, so we'll have a minus sign there. The square root of two times the square root of seven, or you could say the square root of seven times the square root of two, plus the square root of seven times positive the square root of three. So that'll be plus the square root of seven times the square root of three, and then positive the square root of seven times negative the square root of seven will be minus the square root of seven times the square root of seven. Okay, and now here's what I have to do. All I have to do is multiply the square root of two times the square root of three, the square root of seven times the square root of two, the square root of seven times the square root of three, and the square root of seven times the square root of seven. This is easy to do because we're multiplying two roots that have the same index. Of course, the index of all these radicals is two because they're square roots. So we don't have to do anything special. All we have to do is multiply the two times the three. And I'm going to take an extra step and actually do that. Minus the square root of seven times two, because they're both square roots. Square root of seven oh, oh, times three, minus the square root of seven times seven. Okay, let me move this over a little more so it's more toward the middle and scroll it up. All right, well, two times three is six. I've been told that often. Minus the square root of seven times two, which is 14, plus the square root of 21. Now minus the square root of this is seven times seven, which is seven squared. So this, the square root of seven squared, here's one way to do it. The square root of seven squared is going to be seven to the two over two power, which is seven to the one power, which is seven. Or you can do it the way you're probably most inclined to do it, which is, oh, that's the square root of 49, and the square root of 49 is 7. Either way works. So, the square root of 6 minus the square root of 14 plus the square root of 21 minus 7. And that's your answer. And you cannot combine this and this and this because even though they're square roots, they have different radicands. And when that's true, you cannot add or subtract them. 
even though they're the same kind of root. So this is our answer. We cannot go any further. So that was the square root of two plus the square root of seven times the square root of three minus the square root of seven. So make a note, you can't say, well, this is the square root of six minus 14 plus 21, which I think would be the square root of 13. That would be so totally wrong. Don't do it. You can multiply them, yes. You can even divide them, but you cannot add or subtract when they have different radicands. And they're simplified as far as possible. And these are. How do I know? Because this is two times three. I don't have a perfect square underneath a square root radical. 14 is seven times two. That's not a perfect square. 21 is seven times three. That's not a perfect square, but seven times seven is 49 or seven squared. That is a perfect square. So I get to actually simplify that and I just get a seven. Discussion. Okay, then we will move on. So that was this one. We're saving this, so save. Ah, but wait a minute. I want to wait. I want to save this and do that. Before I do these. All right, so we've done this. Let's do this. This is tricky. There. We've got five plus the square root of seven. And we're going to square it. And of course, there's that temptation. Tempt. to say, oh, well, that must be five squared plus the square root of seven squared. So that's gonna be 25 plus seven, which is 32. No, wrong, wrong, wrong. Okay, these things just wait to whop ya. Let's do it again the right way. 5 plus the square root of 7 squared is 5 plus the square root of 7 times 5 plus the square root of 7. And now you get to use, if you're me, you get to use your red, well, reddish, and bluish markers. Makes it more fun. Okay, this is going to give me five times five. Five times plus the square root of seven. Now the square root of seven times five, we always put the number first when we're multiplying. When we multiply um, um, a number, a constant, times a radical, we always put the constant first. Just the way it is. And then we've got, again, the square root of seven times the square root of seven. Which will give us 25. 
Now, we're, we're going to wait on this. Plus the square root of 7 squared or the square root of 49, the same exact thing we had before. And again, the square root of 7 squared is 7 to the 2 over 2, which is 7 to the 1, which is 7. So we'll have 25. This is 7. And in between, we have this. OK. Here we go. The easiest way to do this is to tell yourself a story. This is the story I used to tell myself. That I work in a daycare center where we take care of little square roots of seven. So it's morning and uh, parents drop off five little square roots of seven. And then in the next hour or so, we get five more little square roots of seven. So if we started with five and then five more came to the daycare center, how many little square roots of seven do we have now? We have 10 of them. 10 little square roots of seven, all running around doing things that little square roots of seven like to do. Now we have two numbers that are like numbers, like terms, 25 and seven are constants. I can just add them together, 32. But I also have 10, little square roots of seven, otherwise known as 10 times the square root of seven. And that's how you add them. See, multiplying, multiplying is a breeze. You can do it. But adding takes thought. I always found it tricky. It's the same thing as adding 5x plus 5x. You've got 5x's and you add another 5x's, so you've got 10x's. Any discussion on that? All right, well then, let us, oh, come on. Here we've got this, the square root of five. No, we have to save this also. That's the last thing we're gonna talk about today. I'm sorry. Okay, and we have to save that. Remember, this is the, the uh, what used to be the official department review for the final exam. So everything is on here. We're gonna come back and do that. In fact, we're gonna do it now. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. We are going to save that till the end, though. All right, so. Now we are going to get get into some hardcore simplifying. 
this is something that you are going to have to do on and off for the rest of the semester. And so here's your first problem. Because these problems actually go with these problems. So let's jump to these problems and we'll go back. But there's 175 again. The square root of 175. What you have to do is you have to be a Sherlock Holmes. You have to say, that's too easy. There's nothing I can do with it. And realize that probably there's a perfect square hiding in there. So this is where breaking the number down comes into it. 175. We can break this down, especially with our trusty calculator. We can break it down into any number of different things. It doesn't matter where we start. Um, but I know that I could divide by five. And then if I did that, 175 divided by five is 35. Now 35, five won't break down. It's as far as it'll go. It'll only break down into one times five. But 35 will break down into five times seven. So 175 equals five times five times seven. But look at this, five times five. That's a perfect square. It's five squared times seven. So let's come back over here. The square root of five squared times seven is the square root of five squared times the square root of seven. Let me scroll this up. Well, I have this wonderful little trick I can do with rational fraction exponents. This is going to be five to the two over two, and the twos cancel times the square root of seven so this will be five to the one, which is just five. Five times the square root of seven. That's what the square root of 175 equals. This is the correct way to express this. Radicals are just like fractions. You have to break them down to lowest terms. These are lowest terms. Sometimes we say with fractions, you have to reduce them. Well, you have to reduce uh, radicals, radical expressions also. Okay. The next one on this sheet of paper is the square root of 20. Well, that's really easy. You know that four times five is 20. And you know that four is a perfect square already. I mean, that's one of the super easy ones. And the square root of four is two. So this is two times the square root of five. But what if you don't know that? Well, we start breaking it down. Two times 10, and 10 is two times five. 
So 20 equals 2 times 2 times 5, which is 2 squared times 5. So the square root of 20 equals the square root of 2 squared times the square, well, no, wait, Barbara, you're skipping steps. Do not do that. Now, right now, the square root of 20 is going to equal the square root of 2 squared times 5. And when we're multiplying underneath, we can do this. Not if we were adding or subtracting. Okay, well, you know the little trick here. It's going to be 2 to the 2 over 2, and that those cancel. Times 5. Uh, square root of 5. So, our answer is 2 times the square root of 5. That is how you reduce the square root of 20. You reduce it you break it down, you simplify it to this. You don't want any numbers under a square root radical that could come out because they're perfect squares. Okay. Now let's go on back to that other page. So we've done this one. Now let's do this. The square root of 175 minus 5 times the square root of 28. Well, looking at it just on the surface, I know that I can't add these. Even though they're both square root statements, they're different radicands, the number under the radical. So I can't add or subtract them. I could multiply them, I could divide them, but I cannot add or subtract them. So let's give up and go home and eat some ice cream. Or we could say to ourselves, self, this is too easy. They wouldn't give us a problem that can't be broken down. So let's work on it. We already know we broke down the square root of 175 into, what was that? We already know that this is five times the square root of seven, but let's do it again. This is five times five times seven. Now, minus five times the square root of 28. 28 is 4 times 7. And that's easy enough to find out if you don't know it. For instance, if you could take 28 and say, oh, well, that's 2 times 14. And then take 14. Oh, that's 2 times 7. So 28 equals 2 times 2 times 7, which is 2 squared times 7. So we could even write that that way. OK, well, maybe we should because this is 5 squared times 7 minus 5 times 2 squared because 4 is 2 squared times 7. So that'll be the square root of 5 squared times the square root of 7 minus 5 
which is outside the radical, times the square root of two squared times the square root of seven. So the square root of five squared is five, or you can work it out. The square root of five squared is five to the two over two, which is five to the one, which is just plain old boring five. No offense. Minus five. Now, the same thing is gonna be true with the square root of two squared. This will be two, and of course we did that before somewhere. Two over two, which is two to the one, which is two. So this will be five times two times the square root of seven. So we'll have five square roots of seven minus 10 square roots of seven, which leaves me with, if I have five of them, but I take away 10, then I'm gonna have negative five square roots of seven. And that's your answer. And what started out being impossible now has become very, very possible because you broke it down, you simplified it. Feel free to just blurt out and ask a question. It's not stupid to ask questions, it's very smart. And I know this, this hurts. I was a student once, I had to study this. I know. Okay, so that was this one. We've done this now. Now let's look at this. This is not an addition or subtraction problem. This is two times the square root of five times three times the square root of 60. You could just say two times three is six. times the square root of five times the square root of 60, that's the square root of 300. And then you could break down 300. I mean, there is a, a large perfect square in there. But trust me when I say it's easier if you, if you do whatever you can to simplify this while it's still small rather than having to simplify a bigger number like 300. So let's suppose that we didn't do this and instead did this. 60, 60. Well, you could say it's two times 30 or it's six times 10. When I look at 60, I automatically think six times 10. And then I break down the six. And then I break down the 10. So 60 equals two times two times three times five. Now I'm gonna rewrite it this way. Two times the square root of five, and we're multiplying. Times three times the square root of two times two is two squared, times three times five. Now let's multiply everything together, sort of. Watch what I do. I'm gonna take two and multiply it by three. 
then I'm going to take the square root of five and multiply it by the square root of that. And remember, you can multiply square roots. You can multiply any two numbers that have the same index. So you could multiply two cube roots, you could multiply two fourth roots or fifth roots. Um, so I'm going to multiply these together very easily. 2 squared times 3 times 5 times 5. Look at that. You've got two perfect squares under there. If we wrote it all out the long way, that would be OK too. Let's go back and say this is 2 times 2. And then just do it this way. Five, all under the square root, of course. Five times two times two times three times five. Okay, well, that's going to be six times the square root of. 2 times 2 is 2 squared, times 5 times 5, that's 5 squared, times 3. So this will be 6 times the square root of 2 squared, times the square root of 5 squared, times the square root of three. So this will be six times two times five times the square root of three. That'll be six times two is 12 times five is 60 times the square root of three. I think it's easier to do that. Now, if you hadn't done that, if you had said, okay, we're, we're going to take this and we're just going to say it's six times the square root of 300. If you know your squares pretty well, you know that 100 is a perfect square. So if you see that right away, you could just do this. So that'll be 6 times 10 times the square root of 3, which will be 60 times the square root of 3. So you actually have some freedom here. If you're not familiar with all this stuff, then if you just start working it out from the beginning, you can get the right answer. If you go step by step, or if you already know a lot of it, you can just sort of jump into it and do this and still get the right answer. 60 times the square root of three. It's quite a coincidence that 60 is there. There's nothing automatic about it coming out. It's a coincidence. Okay. Well, so we did this. We've already done that. Already done that. Already done that. And these. Let's, uh uh, we can't do that yet. We can't do this today. We haven't gone over complex numbers yet, have we? I don't think we have, not in this class. You never know, though. OK, notice we're working mostly with square roots. Now, we did this before.
And if we've got time, we can come back and do it again. We did this Thursday, either Wednesday or Thursday. Word problems, you never get away from word problems. It would be nice, you can run, but you can't hide. But let us move on. Oh, that looks like fun, doesn't it? These are both cube roots. We don't work with those that much. But the important thing is these radicals have the same index, so we can multiply them. So we'll have the cube root of, and I'm going to make a little one. Why is this shaky? Oh, I'm on the wrong sheet. Okay, so we've got the cube root of 7a squared b. It's not written very well. Times the cube root of 196a. Okay. So that will give us the cube root of what we said. Um, all right, let's get the numbers together. Seven times 196. A squared times A to the one, because that's what that is, times B. Okay, now a to the 2 times a to the 1 is a to the 3. So we can actually break these down into separate problems. We're going to have 7 times 196. And I don't want to just multiply them. So I'm not going to. Okay. So. Yeah. What is 196? 196. 196, I think it's a perfect square, but I'm not sure, so. Divided by X, and then I'm gonna go second graph. And I just wanna look at all of these. One times 196, two times 98, um, four times 49. That doesn't really help me a lot, does it? No, let's do this. We'll start with two. So 196 divided by two is 98. And two goes into 98, so I have a hunch it's gonna be two times 49, but let's see. It is, isn't it? Yeah, it is. 98 divided by 2. Yep, yep, yepper. This is a perfect square. You've got equals 2 squared times 7 squared. So the whole thing actually is a perfect square, and I believe that it's 14 squared. Yeah, so 196 is a perfect square. 14 squared. So now I can write this in a much more beneficial to me way. The cube root of uh, 7 times 14 squared. Oh. But we're not looking for a perfect square. 
We're looking for a perfect cube. Two times two doesn't mean anything. I would need two times two times two. Seven squared doesn't mean anything. I would need seven times seven times seven. I do have a way to get that. So let's stop being such a smarty, Barb. It didn't get you anywhere. And now let's do it the right way. All right, here's the seven right there. Now 196 equals two times two times seven times seven. Look at this, one, two, three sevenths. Meanwhile, I've got my A bases here, so. A squared times A to the one times the cube root of B all by itself. Nothing you can do with that poor baby. But we are now going to have the cube root of seven cubed. Two times two is not gonna come out from underneath a cube radical. So I'm just gonna say four. Sometimes you just have to give up. Meanwhile, this is going to be the cube root of a to the third. And this is the cube root of just B. So we're going to have the cube root of seven cubed times the cube root of four. Here we've got the cube root of A to the third, so I could just go ahead and say A to the three over three. And here we've got the cube root of B. So now here, look, we're going to have 7 to the 3 over 3 power, and the 3's cancel, just like the 3's cancel right there, times the cube root of 4, times A, times the cube root of B. Well, this is going to be 7A times the cube root of 4B. Almost took a wrong step there. I'm so used to working with squares. Hard to remember I'm looking for a cube. And that's why they gave us 196. They knew it would trick us. So don't be tricked. And if you're thinking that you hate this, well, nobody likes simplifying, but it's just something you've got to do. Unfortunately, I do not believe your calculator will do it for you. It will simplify fractions for you, but it won't simplify roots. We should share a cry over that. Maybe there's an app, but I don't know. There's an app for everything. OK. So we took care of this page. Now we're going to get to some hard stuff, which is why I wanted to wait on this problem. Let me put it down here. Actually, though, it really goes up here. This was the problem on the other sheet I wanted to wait on. We're going to put it here. And I can't write on this sheet because of that. Look at that. Is that messy or what? Send a letter of complaint. All right. Here we have. I mean, math people can be so picky. I'm sure you've noticed. Okay, we're going to rationalize denominators. In the age of the calculator, it's difficult to understand why it's necessary 
to not have a radical in the denominator of your fraction. Just not allowed. So whether you like it or not, you're just not allowed. Now, when you have a square root on the bottom of your fraction, that's not real hard. There's a little, um, there's an easy method to make everything okay and get 100% on the problem. And here it is. You say, uh oh, I got the square root of three on the bottom of a fraction, that's not allowed. So you do this thing that you've been doing for a while, you multiply by one. Wonderful one. Wonderful one you can change the form of. It's the ultimate shape shifter. We could write a science fiction story about wonderful one, but it's probably already been done. I'm going to multiply by one, but in a form that I need it to be, I need to have another square root of three down here so that I can get the square root of three times three, which is three squared. Which, as we know, the square root of three squared is three to the two over two, and the twos cancel, leaving me with three. Notice this is what we really care about. Not having a square root on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, so I have to multiply this by one. And so to get one, I have to have whatever I've got down here up here. So the square root of three to, over the square root of three is one. Just like triangle over triangle is one. Anytime you put things that are exactly alike on the top and bottom, you get one. So now look what we get. If I multiply the tops together, the numerators, and I multiply the bottoms together, the denominators, I get two times the square root of three over the square root of three squared, which is the, the uh, which is three to the two over two, which is just three. So the top is going to be this. And here is our final answer right here. That's what you put in the answer box. Let's do it again. It's so much fun. That, the square root of five over the square root of seven. Nothing wrong with having a square root on the top at all. This guy has got to get cleaned up. So I need to have another, just like up here, I need to have another square root of seven down here. So I can say the square root of seven times the square root of seven. But I have to multiply by one. So that means the square root of seven over the square root of seven, which will give us five times the square root of seven over the square root of seven squared, and that will give us five times the square root of seven over seven to the two over two, because the index, the index is two, and that's what the denominator of the fraction is. So two, two over two cancels, and you're left with seven. So, 
5 times the square root of 7 over 7 is your answer. And that helps us here. Here's the problem from earlier that I said I wanted to save to the bitter end. Watch what I do. First, these are both square roots. I can combine them into one square root. Okay, five goes into five one time, five goes into 10 two times. So this is the square root of one over two, which would be a delightful answer. I like it, but mathematicians and my math lab don't like it, no. So, we have to realize at this point that this is really this. Uh, I got a radical on the bottom. We got to get rid of it. Multiply by wonderful one. Okay. Now, the square root of 1 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 1 times 2. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 2 times 2, which is 2 squared. So we're going to have the square root of 2 over 2 raised to the 2 over 2 power, but they cancel and become a one, actually. So this is the square root of two over two. And that's your answer. That's the politically correct answer. If you're in a math class. Now, if you put this in a calculator correctly, you'll get the same exact answer as if you put that in a calculator correctly. Numerically, they're exactly equivalent. But, you had to get rid of the radical on the bottom. It's like a rule of grammar in mathematics. It's not a matter of an explosion. It's not like having a zero on the bottom of a fraction. Okay, one more, or two. Here we had one number, right? Square root, square root of two, square root of seven, square root of three. One nice little radical on the bottom. One, one term is more important. That's going to come to an end and we're going to have to use an, a different method to get a radical out of the denominator. So we're going to have 2 over 3 plus the square root of 5. Now you have two terms. One of them has a rat is under a radical. Now you can multiply by the square root of five over the square root of five all day long. You are not going to get rid of the radical underneath and you can try. There's only one method that's going to work. It's multiply by one, yeah, but, but the form that one takes is not what you might expect. What we need on the bottom over here is called the conjugate of that. 
So we need the conjugate of this. Now the conjugate has the same first term and the same last term. but it has the opposite sign. So since this is a plus, this has got to be a minus. And then, in order to be multiplying by one, we have to put exactly this up here. Now we're going to be ready to go. I multiply the two numerators together. I multiply the two denominators together. So, 3 times 3, 3 times negative or minus the square root of 5. The, the square root of 5 times 3, and the square root of 5 times negative the square root of 5. Now, don't, don't distribute here until the very end, okay? It's just a better idea not to, in, in case, just in case you come upon something that can be reduced, that can be simplified, that can be canceled. So just leave that the way it is for a little while. It won't hurt. But in here, we're going to have fun. Going to have 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times minus the square root of 5 is minus 3 times the square root of 5. Plus the square root of 5 times positive 3 will be plus 3 times the square root of 5. And plus the square root of 5 times minus the square root of 5 will be minus the square root of 5 squared. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 5 squared, and plus times minus is minus. So, we'll have 2 times 3 minus the square root of 5 over... Negative 3 times the square root of 5 plus 3 times the square root of 5 is the same thing as 3 times the square root of 5 minus 3 times the square root of 5. There were three little square roots of 5 left in the daycare center, and they went home. Now how many do you have? Ha ha, zero, and it's quiet. So these guys zero out right here, leaving me with 9 minus 5. I'm not done. I, but I'm done going more to the right there. My right, your left. All right, well, let's continue on vertically. Vertically, when you can't go horizontally, go vertically. Aren't you glad I did not distribute that too? 
because two goes into four two times, I can cancel out this two. Two goes into two one time, two goes into four two times. So our answer is going to be three minus the square root of five over two. The neat thing about multiplying conjugates is what happens to those middle terms. I love it when they zero out. But this does take practice, and you'll encounter some, I believe, in your homework. Let's do another one of these, and then it'll be time to go. Ah! How about that? 4 over the square root of x minus the square root of y. Four over the square root of x minus the square root of y. There are two terms on the bottom. At least one of them has a radical, and here both of them do. We have the square root of x minus the square root of y. I have to use that conjugate method. So, the first terms are the same. The last terms are the same. The sign in the middle is the opposite. And then I have to write it up here because really I am multiplying by one. This is just another form of one when you have exactly the same thing on the top and the bottom of the fraction, it's one. Okay, so. That gives us 4 times the square root of x plus the square root of y over the square root of x times the square root of x is the square root of x squared. The square root of x times the square root of y is the square root of xy. And minus the square root of y times the square root positive the square root of x is minus the square root of xy. Remember that when you multiply, like when you add, order doesn't matter. And minus the square root of y times plus the square root of y is minus the square root of y squared. So we're going to have four times the square root of x plus the square root of y over the square root of x squared is x. These zero out minus the square root of y squared is y, and this is our answer. Um, I was taught not to distribute, but for that reason before, there it's not going to cancel. So, um, yeah, there's no reason not to go ahead and distribute the four. See what my math lab tells you to do. And this method, these two methods, you learn two methods. 
Yeah, like like with the one term there, but the one term and the two terms. These are called with uh, the one term method and the two term method rationalizing the denominator. That comes from the fact that when you've got a number that's not a perfect square under a square root radical, it is an irrational number, which means it's a number that can never be made into a fraction. So you've got to change it to a number that can be made into a fraction. That's what rationalizing the denominator is. And we are done. And you're now able to do, I believe, all your homework. But of course, the most important thing right now for most of you is to do the exam before 11.59 tonight. This is your priority. This stuff is from the future. Yeah, it's not on the test. I don't think. There's some basic stuff on the test. You know what's on the test better than I did do because you just did the practice exam. You should already be done with it. And ready to make an A on the exam. And then we'll go on and conquer the really hard problems. And find out about all of the secrets of the universe, or at least a lot of them. Well, some of them. <laughs>